really great for the cannabis industry to sort of as a baseline have perhaps genderless or just you know more progressive representation of products that are if intended to, for women, maybe aren't so reliant on our old tropes that we think of as a woman. You know, not pink, not a triangle, um, other silly things like that. Do you smoke pot? Uh, yes, I do. Do you smoke on occasion? Uh, what's the frequency, would you say, more or less? Quite a lot a, a day. I smoke every day. Would you say that, from a cannabis point of view, trust is more important for women than for men? Yeah, definitely, because you get taken advantage of all the time over, you know, like buying things like that. People assume that you don't know what you're doing. Is that reassuring for you, seeing more ladies serving you? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I feel like there's some sort of like comradeship there or something like that. Women are very interested in ways to consume cannabis that are outside of smoking, rolling a joint, and all the traditional fashions. About a year and a half ago, we conducted a couple focus groups with women who are current cannabis consumers. And what they told us is actually, although they consume fairly frequently, they actually were not the ones purchasing the cannabis. And so even though a lot of them had been consuming for you know 10 plus years, they've never really done any of the purchasing. In 2012, 16% of men reported smoking cannabis at least once, compared to 8% of women. By 2017, men increased to 20%, while women nearly doubled to 15%. A lot of women are interested in cannabis coming through the gateway of wellness. For most women in the boomer stage, they are looking for relaxation, for focus, maybe they're doing yoga, maybe they want to entertain and they want to figure out how they're going to be an elevated hostess, or if they have ailments, how they can talk to their doctor in a less stigmatized environment and talk about cannabis as a, as a treatment for their health care. You may, instead of having a cocktail party, have a smoke circle. There's all sorts of things to think about, and I think it will become part of the mainstream, and it will be much more accepted and kind of exciting and really fun. Well, I've never been to a smoke circle. It sounds pretty interesting as are the many opportunities for both men and women to enjoy cannabis together. So there's lots of different products that have been traditionally available and used for many, many years. And of course, now with legalization, you're gonna see a plethora of companies uh, filling the market. Lots of people use cannabis uh, for anxiety in general, and that can help with sexual performance and uh, with just relaxing and letting go. Some people find it helpful for more localized pain, uh, so pain during intercourse, so using a lubricant for uh, just making sure that that feels more pleasurable. Uh, some people use it as more of a um, uh, full body sensation, so they might use something like a cannabis lube that is designed to relax the whole body because relaxation is one of the ways that we help to feel pleasure and builds the libido and the desire. Um, and other people will use it uh, for more general pain, so whether that be uh, migraines or whether that's menstrual cramps um, or for things like endometriosis and fibromyalgia. So it helps in lots of different ways depending on what's going on for women and of course some people use it just for pleasure and for enhancing sensations. For Midas Letter Live, I'm JB Lozon.